and second grade show and tell. Not anymore. As we spend more time zooming our audiences and spend less time listening, our next speaker will offer a few strategies for our ever-increasing engagement in and out of the Zoom room. Let's welcome DTF Jordan Kamenker with a speech titled, 13 Things Your Uncle Roy Never Taught You About Heightening Engagement in the Age of the Nano Second Attention Span. <laughs> <laughs> That's a mouthful. <laughs> what is going on here? It's time. And the lawyer said to me, no way, buddy. There is an eviction moratorium. You can't touch us. The kid's got free room and board, and he's staying put. Okay. Unfortunately, the quarters started to get increasingly cramped, and after a week, he had to make his early debut. He still gets free room and board, so <laughs> Well, while we were communicating about this, we were not allowed to see Mariah. Of course, you know, in this age of covid sequestration, I went to the hospital, <laughs> and there's three guys, and they're like six foot four, and they've got their hands in like this, you want to see who? So <laughs> we're communicating on Zoom. And even in a family thing, I noted just how people lose, they lose engagement. So I thought I'd offer you a few strategies in the Zoom room and even outside of the Zoom room. The first one is connect with your audiences using a personal story, like the one about Mariah. It, it starts the thing going, it makes you more real, particularly to people with whom you are not already close. It heightens engagement. Next, you want to look for allies. And I'm going to tell you, one person in this room is just one son of a <laughs> <laughs> You look for allies, and that also heightens engagement. My niece, Caitlin, graduated last year from the University of Tennessee, and they did one of those bogus online graduations. We're so proud of you. What a load of hooey. So I said, Caitlin, we're going to do a real graduation. You put on your cap and gown, I'll put on my cap and gown. We're rounding up the whole family from you know, three continents, and I need you to, to work with me. You're going to be my ally. You're going to be my partner. And so when the time came, I'm in my cap and gown. I gave a graduation speech by the authority vested in me, right, by the University of Tennessee. And I reached out, and I had a white diploma with beautiful ribbon, and I pushed this right towards the camera. Zoom. And the second I did that, Caitlin had an identical one, and she pulled it back like that, so everybody could see it. Oh, she went, what? what? <laughs> Allies, you need them, and you script it ahead of time so that you have that engagement thing going. Zoom rooms, y'all have done this. How many of you use Zoom rooms in professional presentations? Okay, and what you see is they'll send you to the Zoom room, and you hang out there with your Zoom buddies for three or four or five minutes. You finish after about 90 seconds. And the rest of the time, you know, you're looking at your phone. You, as the discussion leader, as the runner of the meeting, and you know, you're going to the bathroom and you're checking your messages, no. If you've got four Zoom rooms, then one Zoom room per minute. You go to the first room and you check on them and you push them and you see how they're doing. You give them something else to work on. You go to the second one in the second minute, the third one in the third minute. You do not rest. This is your meeting. You own it and you make sure they are engaged. Makes all the world a difference. I've seen you. I know what you're up to. 
And I've seen those beautiful virtual backgrounds. You're in the Himalayas. And you're in the Himalayas. <laughs> it's so cool. No! It is not cool, folks. We already have Zoom fatigue. We have depth perception issues already. You want to hike your connection? Let them see where you really live. Or find the right room. <laughs> and then, don't just limit it to that. I actually take them on a stroll. Now, if you're in a real... If you are in a real meeting, you own that room. And you show the people in that meeting that you own the room by walking around. Now they can't be looking at their phone. They have to follow you. What in the heck is he going to do next? And I actually show them. This is so they don't see me if I'm in skivvies. <laughs> you won't catch me on TV, CNN. So you let them see. I let them see. Oh, look what's in the backyard. Look at my line. <laughs> This helps you connect. Another thing you could do is use your clothes. I've shown some of you this before, but you want to make a message. And of course, you could be a little bit dramatic with it. <laughs> oh, Jordan, no. No. <laughs> yes, mine too. <laughs> Let them connect with your humanity also. I know you're wondering about that. When they see my real background, they see my family picture. On one of those meetings, I'm going to talk about the people. In it. My daughter Sasha made this little fish for me when she was, I think, five years old. And I bring it up at some point when everybody needs a rest. Use your props. Well, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I think I have gone about as far as I can. The last thing I would say is use your voice and your face. I do a fake lawyer ad. If you or someone you know or love. <laughs> Folks, the full panoply of opportunities is at your disposal and in your arsenal. Happy to